Good Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to the VolQuest.com podcast with Austin Price, Rob Lewis, and Jesse Simonton. Brent Hubbs, glad to have you along with us. Plenty to get to on this podcast, and obviously this time of year, um, it's about recruiting. So let's just start there. We'll get to the team and, and bowl stuff and coaching searches and hoops and everything else. No, but coaching searches. Whoa, not, whoa. I mean, for other schools, not for Tennessee. <laughs> Sorry. For other schools. Tennessee is in no coaching search mode at all. Uh, my at my this hair just stood up on my arm. Uh, Sorry about that. Just thinking about it. All right, let's talk recruiting. Jeremy Pruitt's been all over the map, okay? Uh, the staff's been all over the place. West Coast yesterday, uh, been in the state of Tennessee a couple of different times, been in Kentucky. Um, everybody wants to know on the defensive line, I mean, you know, the defensive line, Oxendine, Tyler Barron, Omari Thomas. What do you got? Well, I mean. Rattle them off, AP. Okay, <laughs> we'll start with Omari. I mean, Omari is a, is a guy that I think Tennessee has positioned themselves well with. But the Auburn trip, I mean, you know, much like, you know, and I, again, I go back, I made the mistake of discounting Auburn with Jay Hardy. I should not have done that. I am not doing that with, with, with Omari Thomas. I still think Tennessee's in a, in a pretty good spot there. But Rodney Garner is a veteran. Rodney Garner is crafty. Rodney Garner is polished. Rodney Garner is really, really good at what he does. And so um, I think you have to really, you know, as I told somebody last night, Tennessee's got to continue to recruit Big O as if they are trailing. You've got to be the hungry team trying to chase. Even though you may have the lead, you've got to treat him like you're behind and you're trying to make up ground. And so um, Tennessee's coaching staff in there, uh, today to see Big O, uh, Derek Ansley, David Johnson, Tracy Rocker, all those guys out there in Memphis to see Big O today. Um, you know, Derek Ansley has kind of really taken this one on and, and been a nice uh, wingman for David Johnson. David Johnson put Tennessee in a phenomenal spot there with a lot of those Memphis kids. And then Derek Ansley's helping him um, down the stretch. Um, you know, I, I think DA plays a big role in this. DA kind of all over the map, seeing several family members today, seeing Big O. They're also seeing Jabari while they're out there. And, uh, you know, kudos to those guys for, uh, you know, kind of working as a tandem. Um, so right now that's kind of where I'm at with Big O. Don't you, a, think it's a, don't you think it's a big visit with Tracy Rocker? I mean, I, you know, just to – It is. Just I mean, to kind of cont- I mean, because, look, it's – I don't want to say Rocker versus Garner because there are other people in play. But he made but, it clear at Mr. Football. I mean, right. this position coach is going to matter. And, I mean, you know, I mean, again, Rodney is good at what he does. Yeah. And he knows how to – he knows how to, to, to show out at the right times with recruits. And, and, he, and he's, you know, showed well for 30 years. So um, I do think this is a big visit for Tracy Rocker. I think Tracy needs to put his best foot forward. Um, um, you know, and, and again, I think that this one, honestly, at this point, is really too close to call. I think you know a decision will be probably be made later in the week, and uh, you know would would hope to know more for that uh, Friday podcast pertaining to Big O. But I, I do, it's not like I think the kid's dead set on Auburn at this point. I think the kid and the family uh, have multiple options that they're considering. But I do think it's a two-team race. A and M's just too far. His great, he, he's not only got a grandmother that loves to come to every game, but he's got an 84 year old great grandmother that loves to come to every game. They had a caravan, in they did. They're, they're taking a family of 12 down to the U.S. Army All American game. Great grandmother is not going, but she plans on going to watch him in college some. I mean, it won't be a weekly thing, but she plans at 84 to try to come to some games. AM's just too far away, so this is an Auburn or Tennessee battle here for Big O with Tyler Barron. Um, one, one thing, on, I just want to have a question for you on Big O. What do you think just about the timing of it all in terms of he's going to take this Florida trip, it's just a free trip, Jabari's not going to come here until the 13th, Big O's going to decide on the 9th but not sign. You know, the, the timing of it all does seem just kind of, it doesn't really add up, you know what I'm saying? No, I agree with that. You know, now, I the mean, Florida trip, a lot of people are saying was previously scheduled, but I don't think a lot of us thought he was going to ultimately make that trip. Well, I mean, I know I this. Didn't. Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. When I talked to Big O last week, he and I on the phone, and I said, what's the deal? And he said, I'm down to three. Texas A&M, Auburn, and Tennessee. I said, so Ole Miss is out. He goes, yeah. And I said, it's just those three. He goes, yes. He never mentioned Florida at all. Florida's okay. coming in there to the house on Thursday to see him. He's and going, A&M's th- in on Wednesday, right? Yeah, A&M's with, in on Wednesday. Tennessee and Auburn are in today. And then, uh, and then, you know, again, he's going on Friday down to Gainesville. But folks aren't going. He's yeah, his folks to... aren't going. He's just going to have a family member or two that, you know, are, are going to go, go, go with him. Um, but, I mean, he never mentioned it. That's what, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if it was so prevalent, and maybe, you know, I, you know, I just know how things work in recruiting. And coaches send kids on visits to get them to either help recruit or, or to get them out of the house to keep them away from people that are influences. I, 
I just think you know, if you're Tennessee, again, that's why if you're Tennessee, you continue to recruit very aggressively as if you're behind. Um, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at with that business. AP, you've, you've mentioned this before, but how much of a factor is playing time? And, you know, ironically, you know, you talked about how, you know, in August it looked like you could tell, you could sell playing time to any defensive lineman that's on Tennessee's board. And now I imagine they're getting negatively recruited against because they don't lose a soul. Well, I mean, it's and right. Auburn is losing, you know, some big dogs. Well, and that, that's, the, that's the battle. And I think Tennessee had to fight that battle with Jay Hardy. And ultimately it, it went the other way is Auburn's losing all those, you know, those, you know the Derrick Browns, all those playmakers at Auburn. And they've got spots. Tennessee's not losing anybody, and but, and, and, and and it doesn't really matter. What it, the point is is they have bodies, okay? So my point is is like it's not like you know, Tennessee's like I mean like we're, we're, yeah we're not losing you know some guys that got two or three tackles this year. I mean, but but I had this conversation. I had way. this conversation with Amari's dad yesterday in, in the Titans locker room while they were doing the photo shoot, and he said to, to your to answer your question, Rob, he said playing time is not that big of a deal. It's really not. He said, you know, I, was not, I would not have been opposed to my kid redshirting if that would have been what's best for him. We're not picking a place for promise of snaps. What is important is how many guys have you sent to the NFL? they've sent to the NFL. Okay, well, that message I'm sure he's heard plenty and, and got in his mind a lot from Rodney Garner, who's talking about Richard Seymour. Okay, he's talking about, I can't remember the other guy's name, Stroud. Played, Stroud, you know, Marcus Stroud, who played for forever in Jacksonville. And now these guys at Auburn that he's got, you know, that, that are getting ready to go to the NFL, and Gabe Wright, and um, Fairley, and all these other guys that he's recruited through the years. He's selling, hey, I get my guys to the league. That's why I think this is a big visit for Tracy Rocker to sell his development of guys. In, in a year's time, Shy Tuttle, Kyle Phillips. At, at Tennessee, previous guys he's done. So the dad sounds like it's much less about immediate playing time and much more so about, hey, what's what's the reward on the back end of this thing three or four years from now in, in terms of being a, a guy who's playing on Sundays and, and making money in, in the NFL. Um, I, I think that's an important selling point more so than, hey, you're going to come in. Because the, the dad made this point. He goes, I think, I think Amari is going to really take a stride forward a big step forward for a couple of reasons. One, he's already as big as guys who are, you know, some juniors and seniors. He's already got that size. But he's never just lived in the weight room. He's never had nutrition, you know, all those things. And the other thing too is he's, my son doesn't come off the field. You know, when he finishes right. when he finishes on, on the fourth down punt, you know, he walks down to where the official puts the ball down and he gets on the offensive side of the ball or vice versa. He said so now you're going to get in a rotation of some snaps here and there, and, and you're going to play just one side of the ball. And he said, you know, I think that'll be great for my son. It almost, he almost felt like he felt like his son had been a little bit overworked in high school, but he knew the part of it. But I mean, Amari, there's a lot of private school kids that are like that, that right. then when they play one side, whether it's an offensive tackle or a defensive lineman, blow up. Yeah, and I mean, this is a guy who's never had a personal trainer. He's never been involved in all that stuff. They've just academics focus play football and let it all take care of itself so um I, I'm, with, I'm with ap and, and, and I, I, we I talked about this leaving mr football yesterday there were there were things said in the conversation where you went man it's tennessee there were things said in the conversation where you went man auburn's in auburn's in a pretty good spot there and i think ultimately that's right now why it's but the it's biggest thing is that, the biggest thing is that you know is that he hadn't made a decision yet we, he we has don't not, think. We don't think. We don't think he's made a decision yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the kid's somewhat torn. Um, you know, I do think that it's going to come back around, and, and the families are so close between Jabari and Omari that I, when the rubber meets the road, the fact that Tennessee's taking Jabari now and – But Auburn's getting in there too. But Auburn's not taking Jabari. Well, we don't think they I are. I don't think they are. They not, right now, room. they're not. They're not have the room. Yeah, but you never – I mean – I mean, well, they're, they're telling – gray shirts, They're telling shirts. Tisdall he can't come right now. I mean, they're saving that spot for something. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't think they're doing that for him, but because they know what Tennessee's doing, okay, small is decommitted publicly, they know that – yeah, Auburn no, knows what Tennessee's doing right I now. I don't think Tennessee wanted him, Jabari to decommit so, publicly either. So I think I think Auburn's now going to make their play. You know, they're they're going to make a play there. You know, with with small for Omari's sake. Not saying they're going to offer him straight up, but 
you know, you never know what they're going to sell a kid on. Okay, I mean, it, it, it's absolutely you could sell it. Yeah, on but that. Ten, Jabari's always liked Tennessee. I agree. You know, so I, 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 I just don't think the, the Auburn's going to be a factor. That's my opinion. I, I just don't see Auburn being a factor with Jabari. Uh, you know, even if they offer him some kind of blue shirt, some type of some pitch, I just don't see that. He's always liked Tennessee. Always wanted Tennessee, and Tennessee just, you know. Was slow to get in there with it, but it, all, but it also tells. And I said this last night in the chat. They're close, but it's not a necessity. But it, but it, but they are not close to the point where o- Omari's ever said, "I'm not coming to your school unless you take him," because Jabari was going to go to Ole Miss and still would be going to Ole Miss probably, or at least publicly committed if Matt Luke hadn't been fired. Okay, and three weeks ago, before Tennessee made a play on Jabari. Those two are comfortable not going to the same school, so it's not it's not locked in like that. Is my point, and um, you know, so again, I think it's too close to call between both schools. Five and a half hours away is, is the distance um, for, for you know the drive from Memphis. Five and a half six hours for for both. I think the the drive is probably a little easier to Knoxville than it is to Auburn, but um, those you know, state highways to Mississippi there. and Alabama are a whole lot of fun. But you can, but you can get there in about the relatively same amount of time. So I don't think there's a huge advantage there. But distance is why A and M and Florida, in my opinion, are non factors. Yeah, they're non factors. All right, let's go to Tyler Barron. Tyler Barron, you know, I've said for a while I think Tennessee's a good spot there, based off my conversations with Tyler, based off you know multiple people's conversations with Tyler, but. I get the hesitancy of the board to want to really buy in because I have what happened with Jay Hardy, the fact that Tyler's not in the boat yet. Why is he not in the boat? I, I continue to go back to the fact that, you know, for three years, Tyler Barron has been rumored to go to Tennessee. And, and you know, he's never really had any suspense around his recruitment. I think the kid, you know, really would like to have some suspense. I do think he likes Kentucky, though. So I don't think that this is a, you know, it's, Kentucky's not, not just, just a front. Right, Kentucky's not, not a front, front to, to pick Tennessee. I do think he likes Coach Morrow at Kentucky. I think he likes, you know, Coach Stoops at Kentucky. I, I do think that, you know, they are very much in play. But at the same time, I think, you know, having talked to him, Kentucky has had a couple of decent years on the football field lately. But their history tells you they're not going to last – and so I think that that sticks in Tyler's mind a little bit too. You know, if you make that decision and you go to Kentucky, and then they kind of go back down a little bit, then it's like, you know, what am I doing? So I mean, like for me, you know, that's why I've always kind of stuck with the fact that I think you know Tyler picks and, Tennessee. I mean, if you're a big time football recruit, I mean, and he could legit have gone. I mean, maybe not anywhere in the country, but just about anywhere in the country. I mean, why are we going to go to a place where you're not as popular as the backup point guard? You know. That, that just that makes no sense. To well, me. but I I agree with you, and I think that's a credit to what Mark Stoops has done up there. I mean, I think he's done a solid job of getting of getting guys to come there where they're not the big fish. They're never going to be the big fish. And it's developed. Lexington. I mean, they're, they're they're selling development they're selling hard. Development. I mean, part of the reason Tennessee's going to have to hang on for dear life for Jimmy Callaway is because Lynn Bowden's running for a thousand yards up there as a Wildcat quarterback. That's what Callaway does in high school, and they're telling Jimmy, "This we'll use you like this." You know, what you can come up here and take 10 snaps a game and just run the football. And, I mean, you know, Bowden arguably should be one of the Heisman finalists in terms of, you know, if you're ranking five guys, five, he's had as big of an impact individually on the team as probably anybody uh, in the country this season. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, Kentucky and to Stoops' credit, they've, they've been able to find talent, mine talent, and then develop, you know, many of the guys that they have. Uh, really at a higher clip rate than a lot of these other mid-tier SEC teams. Yeah, but Bowden is not the most outstanding player in college football. He's the most valuable player in college football to his football team. Yeah, because without him, that's a that's a one one two win football team. They're a not they're an absolute non-factor uh, w- without what without what he's done for for Kentucky there. All right, Oxendine. North Carolina kind of hanging around in that deal a little bit. There's Tennessee. What, what's the latest on Octavius? I mean, I, I still think the balls are going to end up, you know, landing landing Octavius. The, the Brandon Dietrich, I think, is kind of you know Tennessee's uh, quality control coach had has kind of spearheaded that recruitment. He's obviously a Kentucky native, has a lot of ties up there. Um, the fact that Oxendine, you know, I think uh, one of his last big visits was to Tennessee. He continues to kind of tell folks behind the scenes uh, that he's leaning this way. 
it's recruiting. Anything can happen. But right now, you know, he's a guy like Tyler Barron will decide on will decide quote unquote on signing day. Um, you know, as we sit two and a half weeks out, I think the Vols feel pretty good about landing uh, the four star from Kentucky. Well, I, you know, I, I go back to Omari. You know, at least he's doing something on the ninth. Like if he was waiting until the eighteenth, and say he was going to sign early, man, you talking about a boom or bust day? You know, for, with, with those three kids. Um, I'll you know, tell you, I, whoever gets Amari Thomas is going to be throwing a piece of paper in front of his face on the 18th. Yeah, 100% <laughs> agree well, with that. And I'm going to tell you something. As, as much as his parents, uh, who are nice people, uh, are, believe that come next Monday things are going to really slow down for them after he <laughs> announces, that ain't happening. They're, they're, I mean, they're, well, they're, all, they're still going to roll into town and knock on the front door. It, to me, it's going to slow down. It, like right now, like A and M still coming by, Florida's coming by. I think those two drift off. It, it, if he well, picks Tennessee, Auburn's still going to keep coming. If he picks Auburn, Tennessee's going right. to still come. Those two, which but is those two, is. yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I think I think Jimbo Fisher's checking a box on Wednesday. You know, we, we've we've recruited him for a year. I'm well, not going to be I'm, in Memphis anyway. He's right, going to go see Chris. Right. I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to not go by and, and, and do an yeah. in-home visit just to make sure. you got to go by but, pure. You know, but I think, you know, I think they've conceded. I, I you wouldn't know. give the address, but I won't. <laughs> so, I love that room. I, I just don't think that, I, you know, I, I think with Omari Thomas, when he announced on Monday, it's not going to slow down in terms of the intensity of it. It may be fewer schools, but the two finalists are going to remain – you know, beating down the door to try to get in and see him and spend time with him, you know, up until that signing day on the 18th. And he says he's not going to sign. Uh, we'll see. I, I just think there'll be a lot of pressure. And, man, and this that. was addressed in the chat. I mean, some people were asking about this in the chat last night. And I don't want to be, you know, preach doomsday scenarios or anything. But in a year where, I mean, Tennessee, have they ever produced defensive linemen like this in state where you're talking about, you know, Barron, Omari, Ribka, Hardy? I mean, ever? I mean, five like that? I mean, if Tennessee – I mean, even, even what's his name that's going to A&M? Uh, oh, yeah, Dallas I mean, Walker. About, Dallas but, Walker. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if the Vols are, you know, don't end up getting shut out or, or get one out of, out of that, that five, I mean, in a year where you clearly showed improvement, you know, in, in year two, like things are getting better, we can develop guys at your position. I mean, I think Jeremy Pruitt's got to ask some hard questions. Well, I think he will. I mean, I, I don't I – don't, I mean, he, he, if, if they get – if they get manhandled with all these guys for whatever reason, then I mean, and it's, and it's not knowing Jeremy Pruitt enough, he's gonna he's gonna get in the room and, and figure out what the problem. And it's is. not a year like we're, you know, four of them are in Memphis, right? And one and of them are spread all over I mean, the they're, state. They're they're, they're they're pretty well distributed. But yeah. see that point. That's why Tennessee, you know, and AP will have a story on them here soon today, tomorrow. I mean, Reginald Perry is a guy that Tennessee's continued to flirt with, and I think he's kind of filling that extra D-line spot that they didn't land with the Jay Hardys. Yeah, I mean, RJ's a uh, guy that a year ago was in 240, 250, and he's now 301. Um, you know, he's, he's put on some weight and uh, put, on an explos- put on some explosiveness. And, and then talking to some people, um, Tennessee really likes this guy. You know, they, they feel like that, you know, as, as I was told, two years from now, everybody's going to be going, how did that guy get, get out of the state of Alabama? This is a product of – continuing to eval senior tape evaluation, not just rest on last year's tape or a summer camp deal, right? Isn't that, isn't that why Tennessee's here with, with this kid? Is they've continued to recruit him, or not to recruit, but continue to evaluate him. They like the senior tape much better than they like the junior tape. And don't, they got to see him in person this summer. Yeah. Don't, don't, you think that's, don't, don't you think that's the case with him? Whereas maybe the Auburns and the Alabamas moved on and had to not circle back around to him. Tennessee sort of always kept him in the back of his mind, continued to evaluate. I mean, that's the one thing I will say about this staff. I think they do a good job with they, even though you're in a time crunch with the early signing day, I think they do a, I do think they watch a lot of tape during September, October, November. They got enough just, people for just it. Just to make sure. Well, everybody has enough for sure. people for it. I mean, for but sure. I think instead of maybe sending out, 785 edits to everybody. They've got some people in the back room going, "Hey, let's circle back around and watch this guy because we was we kind of liked him in our eval, but we want to see more tape. Let's make sure coaches seeing this tape. Let's make sure coaches look at them." I I do think that's one of the things that this staff has has, has done well. Now and that's are, how they that's how they identified Roman Harrison. Right. Yeah. Are they going to land? Are all of them going to be perfect? I mean, means has not worked out. I mean, you're not going to bat a thousand with it, 
But I do think they have continued to evaluate and recruit. That's the, the big kid from Texas that's committed. Kyrie Miller. You know, that's another one that they went, they didn't wait on him to post his senior highlights. They went and found his senior tape, <laughs> yeah. Austin. And they're it, not happy that he posted his senior highlights now either. Right, because it's making it, it might make it easy for a Texas school to jump in there. But th that's one that because they went back and watched him this fall, that's why they made the move there because they they continue to eval throughout their senior season i think that's a strength of, of this of this staff uh, from a recruiting standpoint all right coaches was in in on the west coast coach brooke was on the west coast yesterday feels like they're in solid shape with the linebacker i'm going to mess up his name by Caho. by Caho. Um, and in Washington, where, where do you think that? Where do you think I think Tennessee's a good spot for Darnell Washington. Do I, really? mean, I don't wow. think it's done. I don't. I think it's Tennessee and Georgia. Um, but I think Brian Niedermeyer has positioned himself really good. And if he makes it in here on the 13th, which I don't see no why he would not, um, I think Tennessee's got a chance to a real, real legit shot to land him come the uh, 18th. Set up. It's set up pretty well for him. Give yeah, Brian and remember Niedermeyer he's going to. And he's remember he's going to. Well. He's going to sign. At least I think he'll sign, and but then not keep it keep it on the under wraps until uh, he announces the Under Armour game down in Orlando. And he's already visited Georgia. Already visited Official, Georgia officially. officially. He visited Georgia officially for the Notre Dame right. game early in the year, and so, they went back unofficially two weeks ago. So the only official visit he's got left is Tennessee. Yes. Not going anywhere this weekend. No. Okay. So he's just got the one visit left, and that's it. That, that's pretty nice. I mean. Got to give Niedermeyer some props for that one. That one's, That's the way you want to set that up. They don't always work out that way, but that one is set up. What about the other kid in Utah or, or out on the West Coast there they offered, this defensive end, Jesse? Fillinger? I mean, I honestly don't know much about him. I think in the West Coast guys. Can you they say were, his name? Uh, yeah, but uh, no, I can't say his name. <laughs> I don't know how his name is. But, but I, I think of the West Coast a, kids, they'd be more, they're, they're more interested in that wide receiver. But the question is, do, you know, do they can have they get room? him up here? Yeah, can they get him up here? Can they actually, you know, uh, again, we talk about spots. You know, where, you know, if, if Jabari Small is going to be in the class, they, they really want Keho. It does seem like, and one name we haven't mentioned, he didn't make it up here last weekend for the Vandy uh, game. He is going to actually go visit the West Coast here in the near future. It does seem like. Uh, Tennessee and Lenneth Whitehead maybe are going in a little bit opposite directions. Not ruling it out, but. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, Tennessee's they're, they're at the they're at the high school dance, and they're they sort of walk circling to the, each other. They sort of walk to the middle of the floor to dance, but they really just they DJ changed the music, and they decided to sort of stroll back out. They're not dancing yet. That's kind of what kind of yeah. what's going on. Not to say they're right. not going to dance, right? But right know. now they don't like the song, so they're not. But gonna, he's going to be out of UCLA. He's gonna yeah, have I think that's probably good for Tennessee because Tennessee's trying to figure out what they're doing with Jabari Small. They're trying to figure out where they are with any other running backs. Yeah, that's why I was going to say the Smalls. I mean, I mean, can you take Smalls and White? Head, both. I, mean, I don't. I, I, I mean, I guess you can take whoever you want to take, but I mean, I just. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have. I mean, I don't have any idea how their numbers are going to shake out. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't at this. Point. But I think the, the fact that he's going to UCLA for a visit and kind of stringing it out a little bit longer probably plays in Tennessee's advantage a little bit because you can kind of figure out where you are with O. You know where you feel. You know where. You know is that where that put you over Jabari. You know, and you can kind of decide off of that. I agree with that. Whereas, whereas Auburn's kind of putting the the fire on Tennessee with with Tisdall because they're Auburn's made it clear to him you don't have a spot right now right and Tennessee's like well <laughs> and you know they did there's just empty silence <laughs> right. because they really want they like Keho, but Keho hadn't come up here yet right. you know and so there's Caho ah. excuse me so but Caho hadn't come up here yet and so it's it's well, and, it's, and that, that that is recruiting in a nutshell right now with especially with the expedited you know, early signing period because that, that crunch becomes even tighter as we get closer to December 18th. Well, and the bizarre thing, the interesting thing about it, Rob, is you have a different element of that now is you got some kids who might say, you know what, I'm not going to sign. Oh, I, you, you know, there's that, I don't like the vibe, this pressure's here, this one's here. I, I, th there's enough, there was enough cases the last year or so where a guy benefited himself by not signing. I'm just going to wait. And it's a crapshoot. I mean, it, it, you, may, you may end up you know, costing yourself a spot of the school that you like in December. I mean, because, I mean. Yeah, because the percentages of the last two years have gone uh, each time more kids are signing in December. Right. They go ahead and locking up that I mean, spot. you can certainly open yourself up an opportunity if school X, who you prefer, misses out on the guy they have ahead of you on the board. But you could also end up, you know, somewhere you 
was your third choice in right. December. But you also have, I mean, you, if you're if you're a guy who has some stuff that you sort of like, but you're looking for somebody. I mean, Arkansas is going to be looking for 25 guys come January 1st. And also, you know, so is Missouri. I mean, they may get a guy in and, here and may get a scramble for a few, but they're going to have openings. Florida State's going to have a spot. And, there, and there's going to be assistant coach moving, a lot of assistant coach moving post-early signing period. Yeah, a lot, lot of moving around. I mean, it, it, it's – so there's the variable of maybe you wait. Some people saying, hey, you should wait. Some other people saying, hey, if you don't – if you wait, you're not going to have a spot. Um, tough time for kids. I mean, it really is. I mean, for all the talk of this was going to make it easier – in some cases it does, but there's also some cases where it doesn't. I mean, well, we, nobody wants to bring kids in. Like, you know, Tennessee's offensive staff really don't want to bring in kids on official visits during the season if they can help it. And so then all of a sudden if you wait, 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 and then all of a sudden you've got two weekends. Well, what if those two weekends are full for a kid that's already got something booked that you really want? I mean, it's, 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 it's an interesting dynamic. Well, well it's funny, it, too. I mean, it's, it's, and it, it, it gets overshadowed, but you got two weekends basically, like you're saying, in December – all these teams, whether it's Clemson, Georgia, Oklahoma, LSU, Baylor, all these teams, they can't host anybody this weekend. They get one. Yeah. Because they're all playing in conference well, I, I, championship I think it's games. made it easier for, you know, the big timers. You know, if, if they want to go ahead and decide and not get pestered in, in January and just, you know, live a, a, a you know, pressure-free life. But for the kids like we're talking about, like Leonard Whitehead, like Jamari Smalls, I mean, I think it's – you know, it adds an, a, a real element of uncertainty to, to their recruitment. I don't think there's any doubt. And then again, you've got some kids who have been committed somewhere for a while and their coach leaves and, and they're sitting there. I mean, we, we were talking to um, Elijah over here at South Dole who won Mr. Football yesterday. And then, I mean, what did he tell us? I'm supposed to do something in 16 days. 16 days. I, I can't even, t there's nobody at Missouri's taking my phone call. Like, what am I supposed to do? You know, you got a situation at West, Rob, where you got a couple of kids trying to figure out two kids that were committed to Arkansas. You know, what am I supposed to do? So it's tough in, in, in a lot of ways, you know, that way. More than Joseph. They, they don't have room for that one? Is that a slow play? What? What? I mean, because I talked to him and. I don't think it's a slow play. He was either. playing pretty coy. I mean, I think ultimately this weekend he probably ends up going to Florida. But but it, it, you think Tennessee's ready to go if he wanted to say I'm in? Yeah, Tennessee I do would think take, that. Tennessee would take that one right out and, and go. I think they would take Mormon Joseph if he wanted in. Yep. It's awful fast to potentially get to 25 names, you know, uh, with with the numbers. And, uh, and I think we're pretty out. much there with all the guys. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, we haven't mentioned Jeremy Pruitt's uh, picture with the uh, Cajo family outside the IHOP. Any, any telling signs that he didn't go to Waffle House instead? Is, is that a, is that a better picture than Bob Shoopy <laughs> ice, ice cream with with <laughs> with, with, with Kongbo? There uh, no, there will never be a better picture than Bob Shoop eating an ice cream cone with Kongbo. All right, my last recruiting question. <laughs> then we'll then we'll move on to a couple other things. Auburn offers Jimmy Callaway, right? Yeah. So what does that mean? I still think Kentucky's the biggest challenger there. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, I, yeah, he, I think he's big on relationships. He's been committed here for a while. He's visiting Tennessee the 13th officially. You know, Tennessee's going to get the last say in this thing, and, and yeah. that's good for them. And, 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 you know, wise by Jimmy. You know, you've been committed for, for so long. Why not give the school you've been committed to for so long the last, the last say in your recruitment? Um, but uh, he'll be here uh, next weekend at Kentucky officially this weekend. At Kentucky is the one to watch. So he may not even visit Auburn. Yeah, correct. And they just come in and, and, and offer late. All right. Plenty of stuff in recruiting. We'll continue to try to track coaches wherever they're at. We'll continue to look at new offers that come out, not just in the class of 2021, but maybe even some late 2020 offers as this staff continues to throw out some offers and continues to, to bounce all over the map with that. Um, By the way, I've got to see Pruitt outside of Applebee's to really cement him as an elite recruiter. Are you are you looking for him with Russo out there hanging out outside the Applebee's following a, a, a Georgia game and Abbott or something? I could see Pruitt and Dino sharing a deal with Applebee's. All right, let's me. let's go let's go to this current team. No, I mean, that's who Dino is. All right, let's go to this current team. They're off for a couple of weeks, a week and a half or so, as they deal with final exams here. Everybody waits to bowl fate. Um, Find that out on Sunday. Jesse, is this simply what I've been saying? The number of teams that get in to the New Year's Day 6 playoff will dictate whether Tennessee's in Tampa or Jacksonville? Yes, I think it's pretty simple. And and the more uh, prognosticators release their little bowl things, from Stuart Mandel to Feldman to um, 
State, I mean, all these guys that are doing these, you know, ESPN, Schleyball, and these guys, almost everybody right now has Tennessee going to Tampa. And that's because most seem to think that three SEC teams are going to get uh, into the New Year's Six plus LSU in the playoff. So right now, folks are like flip-flopping between Alabama and Florida, Cotton versus Orange Bowl. But if that if that's how it plays out, then I think Tennessee is going to go to going to get going to get to play in the Outback Bowl. Yeah, because Auburn would then go to the Citrus, Citrus Bowl, Bowl or whatever they call it. It's not Comp USA. What do they call that thing now? Capital One. Capital, Capital One. one Bowl. Yeah. Okay, going to the Capital One Bowl. Tennessee hadn't been get there ready so for long. a lot of Jennifer remember. Garner and Samuel Jackson. <laughs> And so, um, but but then after that, Tennessee would make the most sense over A and M, over Kentucky, right? Over Mississippi State, obviously. I, mean, I think this, I think that would be a no-brainer in terms of selling tickets. Yeah, and you could have. Uh, I think you know we teased it. The row the boat. It could be, be rowing the boat with PJ, or it could be uh, uh, Tennessee and JG versus Harbaugh and and uh, Shea Patterson. Shea Patterson. So. Yeah, I mean, I think the bull thing is pretty simple. For Tennessee, it's more importantly making sure they're going to have enough, you know, get guys getting their academics in order. I think there are some guys that need to, to shore that up. Obviously, they had two guys enter the transfer portal this week. Um, do more guys pop up? Would not be surprised to see a couple other names. Um, I think we're kind of keeping an eye on. So that, that's kind of the, what's going on with this team right the, now. The, the, means, the means deal was surprising and yet not surprising. I mean, he'd clearly been me, un, unhappy throughout the season. Took every but Tuesday to it, off. But to do it now is a little bit unusual to me. I, I, yes, that to me may be the most surprising part of it. Him, him going into the portal is not surprising to me at all. It's, it, to me, it's, it's actually – Ryan Johnson is way more surprising to me than Means because Means all year long – was disgruntled, was unhappy. They had talked him off the ledge. He'd come back, you know, and, and then, you know, he'd be the next week, rinse, repeat. You know, I mean, he he just seemed like, I don't know. And then they he, played him a bunch against Mississippi State, and then he really never played again. He got hurt. Yeah. You know, he was on the exercise bike for, you know, most days that, that he was out at practice. So th- that one, he's – I don't want to say he thinks more of himself, but I think he thought he was further along and he was more ready to play. And I think you looked at Ramel Keaton, and while Ramel doesn't get a ton of run, he still gets, you know, right. played 15, every game. 20 you know, snaps. Yeah, yeah, more yeah. snaps and, yeah. and means is good. So I think that bothered But Ryan Johnson one was interesting just because he is so ingrained with this university. He, he has been certainly a torch, you know, the, the standard bearer for, for in terms of being a student athlete, getting his you know engineering degree in three years, already he's working toward a master. He's made it no secret, both in his post and every time you talk to him, just how much this place means to him. Uh, but he also saw the writing on the wall, and he, you know, he got leapfrogged by several kids. And I think um, even guys who haven't really played this season, like you know Chris Aparigny and some other guys, I mean, you know, they're coming. And so I, I, if he wants to go play somewhere else and, and have a senior season where you can actually. Uh, get a little run, it, it's probably a good idea for him to explore those opportunities. Yeah, and I think that because of the academics where he's at there, he, it's an easy easy situation for him to transfer. You know, I think schools like Purdue, you know, is in need of that in the transfer market. Georgia, Georgia Tech, Tech. Both of yeah. those would make sense because of the engineering stuff there. Florida State's going to want about seven offensive line transfers. You know, so he's, he's going to have his options. Uh, you know, once some things get settled on the coaching front out there. Um, so, will he go through, you know, will he go through the bowl? I think that's an interesting, is, is he going to come out and go to bowl practice with his friends after he's already put out that he's going to enter the transfer portal? Is he going to be told, hey, good luck, you know, don't worry about your bowl gifts, you know, head on. I mean, that will be, that will be, Something we haven't seen yet, you know. And it in terms the, what of, it makes no sense to me is, is like nobody is, is. All college coaches are focused on signing high school kids on the 18th. Nobody's thinking about the transfer portal right now. I, I, to me, I think all kids that are to go transfer are, are much better to do it in January, February, or even you know April or May. Unless because, you've already talked to somebody. And have a spot yeah, reception. unless you've got a, a locked-in spot somewhere. Yeah. Well, some people don't want to wait till April, May, because they want to go through spring practice and learn a new system to further put themselves in a better chance to play if they know they're for sure leaving. And in Johnson's case, you don't have to yeah. worry about getting your academics in order. Yeah, he spring, can. Yeah, right? correct. He can just go on. That, that's right. Um, 
But yeah. but to your point, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of conversations. With well, like Drew last year, you know, he announced he was leaving, but he couldn't graduate till in the summer. So then he was, you know, just out hanging yeah. out, and training, and taking visits, you know, for several months. Yeah, I mean, everybody, you know, it's it's a new world. Everybody handles that thing differently, and, and we'll look at it. You know, differently from that standpoint, does anybody else jump in? Is something we'll keep an eye on. The focus right now, obviously, is academics for the current team and recruiting for this coaching staff. Academics for the basketball team uh, is creating, I don't want to say havoc, but cr creates an unusual spot, Rob, in, in the, uh, December, the December calendar. You got, what, two games in two weeks. Yeah, you play, I mean, and really then you're off a week, and then one, you play. I mean, really one in 12 days. Yeah, you, which is, I mean, you got a break from, you know, play you know, a scrimmage game pretty much Tuesday night against a really bad Florida A&M team. And then, you know, you've got the biggest game in the month of December by far against Memphis on the 14th. And what is that, 10 days in between games, which on the one hand, I mean, it's great on the one hand, gives you plenty of time to, you know, to worry about exams. And also for the coaching staff, plenty of time to scout Memphis and come up with a plan. But, you know, you also that long of a break, I, you worry about losing a little bit of your edge, I think. All right, let's talk about this team a little bit. Folky needs to go get some sun, right? I mean, yeah, Folky <laughs> needs to see the beach and also needs to understand his role on his team, apparently. So, John Fulkerson goes one for two against Florida State, two points, two rebounds. Comes back out the next day, goes seven to ten from the floor um, and, and records, you know, three times as many rebounds as he had the previous night. How does Tennessee find, or how does John Fulkerson do that as opposed to the I mean, disappearing act was, a little I, bit? I think that was a great lesson for John from Friday to Saturday. I think his head coach lit him up in between those two games. <laughs> and I, mean, I'm, I don't think that. I know he did. And, and I think that that was just a – I mean, I, I just think John is – I don't want to say he's uncomfortable. He's just not been in the role – that you know that he's in now. I mean, he's always been able to defer, to pick his spots, to worry about you know playing defense, you know worry about you know being an energy guy, making hustle plays. And now Tennessee needs him to be a guy that demands the ball in the low post and does something with it when he gets it. I think you saw on on Saturday against a good team that he can be productive. Now Florida State is going to be a challenge. I'm not, I don't know that he could have even if he demanded the ball and got those touches. He might not have been a productive, but he would have. You know, it would have changed the way Florida State had to defend if he's you know in there sucking the defense in, being active in the paint, and and I just think that that was a, a great illustration for him to learn from personally that hey, this is what I need to do for my team. Even though I've not been in this role before, I've got to be more aggressive. I've got to set up strong. I've got to you know carve out position. I mean, I just I think it was a great lesson for the whole team this whole weekend. But but Fulky probably in particular learned what he needs to do if they're going to beat good teams. All right, what do they do? How do they manage Lamonte Turner and the turnovers and the time and I the think, amount of minutes he's playing? I think the turnovers will get better as he gets more accustomed to, to you know, playing the position and, and kind of finding a balance. I, I think the key to the minutes state is Rick is – I mean, and these kids have to earn it, but Rick's got to get more trust in Devontae Gaines and, and Jalen Johnson, and they're not going to play point. But when they can play – twelve, I mean, when, they, when they're in the game – Rick can take Lamonte out and put Josiah on the ball. And that's, but Rick's got to trust those kids. I mean, it's a catch 22. Rick has, Rick has to trust them. They've got to earn that trust, but Rick's got to play them. You know, Rick keeps saying, I got to see it in practice. I got to see it in practice. Well, I mean, at some point, you're just going to have to roll the dice and, and play, you know, Devontae gains six minutes a half. So you can put Josiah at point guard and put Lamonte on the bench. He did play both those guys in the first half in the second game in terms of Jalen Johnson they games, and they, they gave him some production. And then in the second half, they did not. Yes. So I, you know, but I, I do think Josiah is getting a lot better. And I keep, I mean, I just, I think he's going to keep coming as he gets more comfortable. And I think that's going to help with the Lamonte thing. Because I mean, what, what I saw more of against VCU was even when they were on, when Josiah and Lamonte were on the floor together, Rick put Josiah on the ball and let Lamonte play off, which I think took, you know, took some pressure off him. So it's not, even if he's playing heavy minutes, it's not as much of a toll if he's not you know, bringing the ball up every time and, and, and initiate, having to initiate the offense. So you know, that's, not, that's not as good as sitting him on the bench for you know, two, two minutes and, and the TV timeout, but it's, it's better than just you know, what they were asking of him. Is this team better? Did Rick, you think, then they thought they would be at this point or about where they thought they'd I be? I think they might be a little bit better just in, on, on defense. 
okay. is what I think. I mean, and I, and I think, I mean, Rick was not, in talking to Rick, I mean, he, he was not unhappy at all with what they got done in Florida. You know, splitting those two games. Yes, he would have rather won, but he thought that Florida State game was, was a great lesson for his team. And, and he was proud of them for the way, I mean, they played like crap on offense. He had 21 turnovers. They shot 33% from the field. Yet, they're in there, I mean, they went almost nine minutes without scoring a, you know, hitting a shot in the first half. Yet, there they are at the end of the game against a good team with a chance to win it. And I think, you know, for all those guys, I mean, not that, you know, some of the veterans needed, needed to learn that lesson, but for the, for the younger players, I think it was a great example of how, you know, when, you're, when you just don't have it some nights, if you grind on defense, it's going to give you a chance. And, and it's really, you know, I talk about it a lot, I mean, and certainly Rick does, but it's really hard for young guys to not let, you know, how, how they're playing on offense affect their effort, their attitude on the other end of the court. And I thought that was a great example of just, you know, being able to block out how bad you were on offense and go down and, and play the next possession defensively. Yeah, Barnes said on uh, Vol Calls Monday night that they met every defensive goal that they have for a game, yet they still lost. He said, you won't see that happen very often. And I think that's where he took positives from the Florida, as bad as they were offensively. And they, they did rebounded come, Florida State by 10. Right, which, they did commit to play. If you would have told me that was going to happen. You thought Tennessee would win. Oh, no, no question. But you never dreamed Tennessee was going to turn the, the basketball over 21 no. times, 13 in, or whatever it was in the first half, which was just really, really, really ugly. So plenty of basketball uh, as it, the Memphis game looms large coming up uh, following final exams. We'll have plenty of coverage of Tennessee basketball leading up for that game uh, and coverage of uh, – uh, the, the, uh, the, the as Rob calls it the scrimmage game this week this week as well. Uh, let, let, as we wrap it up here, give me some predictions on on, co on coaching moves. Is, is Arkansas going to hire Lane Kiffin? Anybody God, buying let's that hope so. No? You're let's all, let's so. all hope so. You think that's going to happen? I just want to see Lane. I want to see Lane call the pigs. And see him call the hogs. I want to see him call the hogs. I mean, all, all these other coaches that they want seem to be either signing, re-signing, or have better opportunities. So. I mean, Matt Campbell, he, he, he wasn't going to leave. He just got an extension at, at Iowa State. Norvell's got way better. Ole Miss is a better opportunity. I think he's probably Florida State's top choice if they can't get uh, Notre Dame's coach or Jim or Franklin. So I, I, Arkansas could do a lot worse. What do you think? I think Lane would be a home run. I think, though, that Lane's going to end up pulling back on, and not taking this gig. I think he's because I just think it's a tough job to yeah, win. Yeah, does he out. want to be in the well, West? I think it's a super tough job, but I think he's probably a lot of money. But tired of making six figures as opposed to making I don't know he's three got, plus. He's got a boat on the on the coast. Yeah, no pressure. He's got to pay for it. You know, um, Missouri, I just don't know how many other opportunities Lane's going to get. Right. This, I mean, I think in he's going to this league. He I, may get opportunities elsewhere, but in this league, I don't know how many other. I mean, I think he's so he's going to have to prove himself at a job like this before yes. he gets the kind of job he wants. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, Missouri looks like they got money problems. Yeah. No I mean, offense to Will Healy, but if you're interviewing Will Healy from Charlotte, young guy who's an up and comer, who's he wanted Austin P, left Austin P in great shape. That's why they're. You know, still playing right now. He's taking Charlotte to Bahamas for the Bahama Bowl in year one. But he's talking to Missouri. Why can't we go to the Bahama Bowl? Which, I mean, seriously, like, that should be something we should be doing. They don't have any – are you going to take the Disney cruise over? Well, that would be phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, is, is that where Missouri's at? That's what it, see, it mean, seems like. Just, I mean, we've all been to Missouri. Is it any surprise that they have money problems when you look at those facilities? And, I mean, they're not fishing in the same waters in other SEC I, I mean, I think it's hard. I think it's hard for them to go get somebody of – they've either got to hire a, an assistant somewhere or they've got to hire a young Mo coach Dooley. at a young place. I don't think Dooley's going to get that job. Um, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how much Barry Odom and Derek Dooley are having conversations at this point. By the way, Dooley gets like $3 million to go away. And, and, and just the typical Derek Dooley. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, like his contract has an automatic rollover in it. And so he's got like three years. They have to buy him out for three years. It's, it's, well, it's like, you know. Like, like Chief's getting $3 million to leave Arkansas. Dooley's getting just shy, I think, of $3 million to leave Missouri. At 300, Chief was, make, Chief was making like, what, 330 or 375 when he left here? How many years would it take to, when he was working here to make $3 million? I, I mean, I've, I've had, me and Brent have had this conversation before. I bet by now, I bet Chief has made more money in the coaching business than Phillip did, or at least it's close. Probably. Uh, oh, I agree yeah, with that. I, I think you're right. Because, I, I, I mean, I, ever since he left, he's been making a million and not two. When Phillip didn't get there until very late in his career. He got there in 99, at the end of the 98 season. He became a million dollar coach after the 98 season. And Chief's been making a million bucks for a decade. And, yeah. and, and Chief's been a, a defense coordinator. This was year 25 in this league. All right, Florida State Norvell. 
Seems like it. Seems like they're going to miss on, on Kelly and, and uh, Franklin, Franklin, I don't think, wants that job. So. And a young uh, athletic director at Ole Miss probably didn't handle that whole situation the best he could have handled that on Sunday. The way it leaked out, you got players mad, you know, they're storming out of meetings, they're talking about leaving, everything else. Any chance they promote within? No. I, I, I think they You know, Rich Rod wants that thing. No, but I, I, bec it's Ole Miss, Hugh Freeze. Rich Rod has some similar off the field <laughs> stuff in terms of. Uh, bring, bring Hugh home. That's what, I, that's what they need to do. No, it, that, that's got Billy Napier written all over it to me. At Ole Miss? I, I think. I think. Wow. I, I think. Over Willie Fritz? I actually, yes, I think that, I think they're going to go with a guy that has SEC ties that, that has ties with both Dabo and Nick. He's coached with both those guys. He's done well in Louisiana. He's we can South only hope he doesn't complain as bad as Dabo complains. That is Good true. God, that is true. Dabo. I mean, now, now you're I, going to make the playoffs, Dabo. Shut up. All right, just enough. And everyone picked you to go 12 and 0 to start the season. Right, just, I, mean, I mean, quit quit acting like you. I mean, that's, I, I oh, do that's think annoying. I do Sorry. think that Ole Miss has their fingers crossed big you know. time that it goes poorly with Norvell and Florida State. That he pro Norvell probably is their number one guy, you know, right down the road. God, Memphis might be a better job than Ole Miss right any, now. Any, any chance Arkansas flirts with Hugh Freeze? Too soon? Too soon back in this league? Bobby Petrino, all those too soon in Arkansas? Uh, Not going to work? I, I, we got um, no? the search firm that hired at Ole Miss, same one that ran it at Rutgers, so. Butch Jones? Butch Jones. Butch Jones trying to get in that mess there? All right, we've, we've gone way too long on coaches. Hey, by the way, Butch, Butch made his first appearance. As, point, shut it down. as pointed out in the chat last night, you've gotten a little salty here lately. So any four-letter words you want to drop out in the podcast? Uh, no, the I, got no, I, got no I got no bad language got, here. This Paul, is the first time we've had to go seven-second delay on the podcast. Yeah, Paul, Paul, I, Paul Fortenberry sent me a text, told me I need to calm down a little bit. He was... He was a little taken aback by my comments in the well, Instant React podcast on Saturday night. Paul, so. Paul, Paul still says, you know, like, gosh and dang. <laughs> well, golly know. gee, Paul, we're going to head on out of here. Yeah. That's going to do it for this edition of the podcast for Austin we'll Price, see you, Paul. <laughs> Jesse Simonton, and Rob Lewis. I'm Brent Hubbs. Have a great day, everybody.